Good morning, everybody out there at work, getting ready for work. Lubman back there doing solo duty. Spadoni's out sick. Get well, Spadoni. Lubman's back there, men in the phones, men in the board, men in the music. So he's going to be a man of many traits today. Good job, Lubman, so far uh, getting this show ready to roll. Good morning to everybody on YouTube and Twitch, powered by First North Cal Credit Union, Xfinity Mobile Tech Slide, Joe Shasky here, Bonte Hill. We get ready for the L.A. Rams and the Niners. Look, they've had their number in the regular season. In the regular season, the Niners have won eight straight games against their SoCal rivals. That one loss, we know when it happened. We won't talk about it, but that highlight right there, Joe Davis on the call, Christian McCaffrey kind of introducing himself, reintroducing himself to the Bay Area. One of the more iconic games in a 49er uniform for an offensive player, a passing touchdown, a receiving touchdown, and a rushing touchdown. And that was going into the bye week where the Niners did not lose a game. No. Until they played Philadelphia. That was such a great game last year. And it felt like it kind of ended the Rams season. Yeah, it did. You know, it felt it, like it. Yep. It, like the, the, I don't know what ended up happening after that, but that to me signified the end of their season. They're feeling real good about themselves right now. They I think are. they might have had the number one upset of the week. Yes. We, we asked Baldy yesterday. So said, Baldy, what's the biggest? He goes, I, I did not see the Rams going up there to beat Seattle. Did not see that. I didn't see it. I'm watching the game, Shasky, because, you know, it's the afternoon mm-hmm. game. Niners game's over. So we got Raiders and Broncos. We got, you know, the Eagles and Pats. And I'm watching because your boy had a little chicken on the sea chickens. Uh, Did you have a, a breast seven. or a thigh or a wing? Uh, well, I didn't get anything. <laughs> I got nothing but bones uh. and trash because that's what Seattle played like in the second <laughs> half. Uh, 20 minutes of time of possession they had. The Rams held the ball for 39 minutes. But the physicality that they played yeah. with, they looked like the Rams – of old. The Take, Rams, the early Rams under McVay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and well, then they were also taking deep shots down the field. Yes. Stafford, you know, for all his, uh, I guess, recklessness that we, yeah. we talk about, the guy can sling it downfield. He can. He, can. I he mean, is a beautiful thrower of the ball. And Tutu Atwell. And this Nakua kid, this rookie, who had 15 tackles. I claimed him in fantasy. Yeah, I, you know what? I slipped up yesterday. I fell asleep, didn't claim no You waivers. didn't get the waivers in? I, I, I fell week asleep. Week one is early. the most crucial I know, week? I know. I saw all the lists when I woke up this morning. I was like, you know what? I'll be okay. I'll be okay. <laughs> um, I won't jump the cut. I'll keep my waiver position. But, uh, no, these guys, these guys with the Rams play hard. They're no-dames guy. There are a lot of no-damers on this defense as well. But it all starts with number 99, Aaron Donald. And Aaron Donald looks motivated. Eric Donald looks like a guy who doesn't plan on retiring anytime soon. Well, I, I'm glad you started there because I said to Lubman when I walked in, you still feel, fear Aaron Donald the way you did two, three years ago? Probably not because the Niners have won eight straight games, but he's still a factor. You can't sleep on him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He, he woke up in the fourth quarter of the NC Championship game. But for the most part, the Niners... They know how to neutralize him. Mm. I don't know what it is, whether it's Brindle, whether it's Burford, whether it's Banks, whoever it is. For some reason, the Niners have been able to neutralize him, and I wonder why. Well, I feel like if he's going to go anywhere, he's going to target that right side of the line. Mm-hmm. Uh, Burford alongside of Colton McKivitz. If we were looking for a soft spot in the offense right now, sure as heck feels like that's that particular right. area. And I, I'm not losing my mind. Like I think everybody's kind of overrating how big of a hole it is right now. Mm-hmm. We're one week in. It's a salary cap sport. You're not going to be loaded with all pro players at every position. Look around the league. Okay, Detroit has a really nice offensive line. Who else? Where you got five guys right. with name recognition. This is not the 90s right. with the Dallas Cowboys where you could name their entire offensive right. line left to right tackle. Right. Like, I mean, I don't know. I, I just even feel the like Cleveland we Browns, of, they we, lost Jack Conklin in week one. Their tackle. Yeah. Dallas has a good offensive line, Shasky. I think the Eagles have a very respectable offensive line. That's the one hole we all knew about the 49ers. But this is why you you have the cap space. This is why you have a position yes. that you're in. That's why you're in the position that you're in to say, you know what? If we do need a right tackle at the deadline, if there is somebody who becomes available, we could be in play for yeah. it. But it's something we all know about. Mm-hmm. It's the one weakness on this football team. Right tackle, and how can Burford pick up this game? Because he's regressing a little bit. I don't like the way he started off Sunday. Well, look, let's let's. I want to ask the fans here because, like, you can allocate your funds however you choose. That's the beauty of salary cap sport. You get uh, equity when it comes to draft picks. What do you want to do with them? Right. You get equity in terms of hey, it's two hundred. I think it's two thirty right now, right. Uh, give or take salary cap. How do you want to spend your money? I'm 
much happier spending my money on crazy good skill position players the way that they have as opposed to spending over the top amounts of like did you want to spend 50 million on Mike McGlinchey? No, nobody did. I didn't. Nobody did. And I don't know if McKivitz is better, worse. Like time will tell. I think you right. need to give him half a season. Let him play. And, and isn't it good that he got TJ Watt out of the way early? Yeah. I mean, TJ Watt first game of the season. All right, we're going to see Aaron Donald. Maybe Aaron Donald lines up outside of Colton McKivitz. That's fine. Get him away from the middle. Exactly. That's an advantage for the 49ers. Exactly. You know, run right down running, the middle. They were running a lot of dive plays against the Pittsburgh Steelers and George Kittle, Juszczyk. These guys were getting their pads on the other pads, and they were making blocks up the middle of the field. They ran a lot of quick tosses up the middle of the, uh, middle of the defense. So if Aaron Donald wants to line up outside, fine, fine. But I think Colton will be fine. He will be fine. Think about how many premier. Now the next test for him, I believe, it's going to be Kayvon Thibodeau, week three. Yes. And then, of course, Micah Parsons in week five. But this is all good for Colt McKivitz. He needs these reps. He needs to learn how it, how it is to play against the big boys. And if he can't handle it, then that's where you send tight ends over to help a block, which I don't love necessarily because I want all these guys in a route. But they'll figure out. Shanahan well, will figure out how to scheme around this guy. And the beauty of Brock Purdy is, boy, he sure seems to have, for the most part, pretty good pocket awareness. And he has pretty good feel of the pressure. Very good and feel. he's done a great job using his eyes and right. his legs, either sidestepping, stepping up, moving back, spinning out. He does a really good job evading the rush. You're going to give up sacks. Yes. Whether it's Aaron Rodgers in his prime, whether it's Tom Brady, Joe Montana, these guys are going to get sacked. To think that they're going to have a clean sheet all right. 17 games is completely foolish. So, I don't know. I just I look at the way that they've allocated their money and not spending money on right tackle, I actually think is a good thing. Now, I'm you obviously would like to, to hit on a late right. draft pick the way they did with Burford. Banks is a draft pick. Brendel came out of nowhere. But I would much rather have Debo and Kittle and McCaffrey and Ayuk potentially being re-signed and spending my money in those right. areas as opposed to spending a ton on a right tackle and maybe not having an extra playmaker. And listen, you got a slew of draft picks next year. You can identify the right tackle in the first couple rounds next year if you really need to and groom that right exactly. tackle alongside Burford or bang some young studs Exactly. Because you're going to have to find a left tackle as well at some point when Trent Williams decides to hang it up, whether it's after this season, the next mm -hmm. season. But you got to identify some tackles. So you got the you got the draft picks for that. I think the Niners are in a great position. We saw in 2019, they lost Staley for a period of time. They lost McGlinchey for a period of time. They didn't skip a beat, really. No. They really didn't skip a beat. So um, I think they will be fine. When they didn't have Trent Williams at, at times, was it rough at times? Absolutely. But these defenses, they got monsters on the other side now. You look all around college football. You look all around the NFL. Defensive linemen and edge rushers are ahead of the game. They're tough to block. They're getting fat. They're getting faster. Mm -hmm. They're getting stronger. They're getting bigger. They're getting smarter. So, so you know, offensive line play. This is something we talked about for many years since we started doing shows together. Offensive line plays down all around yeah. the league. It's not going to be perfect. It's down in college. Mm -hmm. It's down in the pros. Like watch college football. It's the greatest. Shador Sanders played Saturday against Nebraska. He got sacked like five to six times. He's running for his life. Right. <laughs> so it happens at every level. Exactly. So that's why you need a quarterback who can make a play at improv. And that's the one thing about Brock Purdy that I loved about Sunday is that when he did face the rush, he kept his eyes down the field. Yeah. He delivered the ball, and he improv. That's Jimmy G. And I'm not trying to sit here and wreck Jimmy G. But the difference between Jimmy G and Brock Purdy is the play Brock Purdy made to Debo Samuel. See a rush, see yeah. a rush, roll it out left. Wait, I'm not going to cross the line of scrimmage. Boom, there's Debo right there for a 12-yard game. Jimmy couldn't do that. And that's the next phase of this offense. And that's why Shanahan loves Purdy. I would also say red zone ball security oh. is extremely, extremely good for Brock Purdy. It just, to me, the naked eye, and I don't have data to support it. I'm just going off the eyeballs. It sure feels like when they get into the tight areas in the red zone, not that Jimmy was an interception waiting to happen, but a lot of his worst decisions would come in the yeah. red zone. Where he's thrown in the middle. Of the, we saw that Sunday against the Broncos. He started in the I, teeth of the defense at the goal line. Just bizarre Purdy, plays from him. Brock Purdy takes care of the football. He does. If he needs to run it. And that's the other thing. He can scramble and go rush and yes. score for a touchdown. He has a nose for the pylon. Well, but I just love the way he attacks the, the boundaries because it feels like in the red zone, he really right. likes to put the ball on the on the outside. It's like, hey, either my receiver is going to make a play or this right. ball is going to go out of bounds. No doubt. Like, I'm good with that. I'd much rather you do that than float one across the field as you're getting mm -hmm. hit. 
I mean, I'm just thinking about that Chiefs interception, for right. example, for Jimmy G last year, where they get into the red zone. It's a tight yeah, game right before halftime, and he just throws one just up. Throws and everyone's one up. going, "Where, where right. are you going with that Brock ball?" Brock Purdy doesn't do that. His poise is unbelievable. Brock Purdy's poise. I, I still I can't get over I, the ball that he caught on his back. Oh, whereas he was falling down, fumbling. That was a hell of a play. That's a hell of a play. To keep the ball and uh, keep the ball middle by the Niners sideline, man. So Brock Purdy's playing they, well. You know what, B? They do need ahead. to get that second back going. That's one thing that Elijah like, Mitchell, I thought, ran hard. Yeah, but I, I would like to see maybe. How do I put this? Maybe get McCaffrey out as a slot receiver and get Elijah on the field a little more often. Like I think going twenty five like life minutes, not game minutes, in between carries. It's very difficult for anyone to kind of feel the rhythm. Right. You know, I'm looking at at and I'm, this, they're tough. not the template of 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 using two backs. But when I watched Eckler and Kelly the other day right. for uh, the Chargers, it felt like they were kind of like right. taking turns going back and well, forth. I don't want it to be that dramatic. Well, remember Eckler got hurt though. Uh, that's true. I just want to see them mixing Elijah see, a little more. Because I do think he's a nice change of pace. And see, I think getting that second back going is important for the run game. It, it is very important. I agree with you because you want to keep the carries down. I'm looking at this week. I guess the Rams are going to be a very physical football game. And then you got the short turnaround against the New York Giants for the home opener on Thursday. So you're probably going to limit those carries yes. to Christian McCaffrey. Here's my issue, though. And I think Shanahan sees it like this. I think. I don't know. I'm not living in his head. But he's like, I got Christian McCaffrey on the field. It changes everything for my offense. All right, they want to go eight in the box because of Christian McCaffrey. Well, then I got Ayuk and yeah. Debo one on one, and we saw Ayuk. He's going to beat one on one all season long. He's a problem outside. Debo Samuel's a problem outside. You need to get George Kittle. So if you do bring in Elijah, I'm not sure how much the defense is respect Elijah That's right now. You know what I'm saying? To That's loosen that point. box up. Well, I, I just look at it. But from- I do. But I do agree with you. They got to get something going here. He had five carries, no rhythm. They got to find a second back because I do want to limit some of the carries on McCaffrey. You got to have the long play. You you got to have the long play Uh, with McCaffrey. But I get why he would just ride McCaffrey. And it's early in the year. Maybe you want to build up his stamina so that he can be productive in a tighter fourth quarter game. But, man, that Thursday game looming early on in the season, I, I... I just think it's 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 important to keep McCaffrey right. as fresh as possible. Because let's be real, as much as you know, it's important to get off to a great start in September. It's also really important to stay healthy and be ready and humming yeah. come mid December. You know what? I don't worry about McCaffrey getting hurt. He didn't get hurt at Stanford. He ran the ball a lot more at Stanford. I watched him play some physical football games at Stanford. Uh, this guy doesn't get squared up. He knows how to protect himself. He knows how to protect his body. Even the jump cuts inside the hole for the little 11-yard gaze. The way he squeezes gaze. himself. He squeezes the hole. Look at the way he squeezed it on the 65-yard <laughs> touchdown. Such a great run. I mean, God, this guy played unbelievable football, so I'm not sure how much I want McCaffrey off the football it's field. True. You know what I'm saying? Because he's such a factor. But I get the long-term play. But he takes care of his body. This is why they work out in the yeah. offseason. That's why they go through training camp. They preserved him during training camp. He didn't really play in the preseason. So I'm cool with McCaffrey right there. Real quick on the Rams. Um, when the Niners beat him last year, 31-14 to and going to the bye week. And the Niners improved to 4-4. and Remember, it was Operation 4-4. Yeah. Just get me to 500. Yeah. Get the bye week. Boy, things take a deep breath. Felt so different. Oh, it felt so different. But the Rams, that was the beginning of a six-game losing streak. So to your point, it flipped their entire season the wrong way. There we go. The wrong way. They just came off a win against Carolina. They had a bye week to get ready for the 49ers. They had a bye. That's pretty incredible. They had a bye. They get beat up by the Niners. They lose at Tampa Bay. They lose to Arizona at home. They lose at New Orleans. They lose to Kansas City at Kansas City. And their team just fell apart. They got hurt. Stafford gets hurt. Cup. Everybody just starts breaking down for the L.A. Rams. So, the Rams want this one. You can tell they're hungry. They've lost eight straight regular season games to the 49ers. Eight straight regular season games. I was listening to Stafford. They, they were playing some of his postgame sound on the NFL Network. You know when they go around the league right. and stuff? And he goes, you know, not having Cooper Cup out there, because someone asked a question like, not having Cooper, did you spread the ball around subconsciously a little more? He's like, you know, when you have that number one target, you tend to look in that yep. guy's direction, whether the play is there or not. That's and when guy. you don't, you kind of just, you're just playing the way that the playbook was meant to be right. as opposed to trying to force feed it to somebody. So I think they're a dangerous opponent this week. Not no. that there's some, you know, insurmountable force or I view no. them the way I view the Cowboys or the Phillies, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. But boy, I... I think they're very dangerous heading into this week. 